So there's a pandemic on and nothing's the same. The world has gone crazy. What's gonna happen to our lives now? We're not all doctors, we're not all nurses, we're not all essential workers. So for people like me, who is a missionary, who is a minister, what do I do? I am Tamara V. Lawrence and welcome to As a missionary for eight years, who've been to, I don't know, countless countries and on three continents, I have seen and experienced so much. But now there's a pandemic going on and I don't know what to do. I need people. I need to be able to tell people about Jesus and I can't because I need to be social distancing. I can't go to any countries. I can't travel around. I can't visit. What do I do? In this program, I'm going to share with you some tips on what I find that we can do to minister during a pandemic. Like, subscribe, share with everyone as we do our best to make this crazy situation a lot better. Okay, so um, first things first. Okay, as I said, I'm a missionary and I say minister because I think we're all involved in ministry. Yes? So, um, whether you're a, a singer in church, whether you were the deacon, the pastor, whether you were just the person who would say hello to everybody, that's your ministry. You just like being very friendly on a Sabbath and making visitors feel welcome. Yeah, that was your job. But you can't do it because now there are no meeting in churches in many countries. Yeah, so everything is on Zoom. How do we get people to come to church with us now? How do we invite them to Zoom? How do we let others know that all this craziness will not last forever? Because there's coming a day when everything will be fine, it will all be over and we'll be rejoicing with Christ. And even if you decide that, hmm, I'm going to give this world another, this earth another 10, 15, 20, 50 years, if that's what he decides, how long, how do we um, carry on through this and after this? Okay, just so you know, as I said, as a mission teacher, with students who live live on my campus, my position is to ensure that the students have a saving relationship with Christ. So they're suited for this earth and for the one to come. But when the government says, all your students need to be at home and you need to be on a screen talking with them, what do I do? How do I maintain that relationship with them? So what do I do? I depend on the, the personality that the, the Lord has given me. Yes, because my students, they're used to me giving them hugs. They're used to me sitting down and seeing how they're doing. The girls are used to me visiting their dorm room, lying on their bed, chilling, talking, doing exercises together, face if we have, whatever it is we have to. My girls are used to that. The boys are used to me playing guitar, seeing how they're doing, talking with them, letting them know I'm here, you know, being a mama kind of thing. But then I'm not able to do that. So the only thing that I can do is ensure that they look forward to my Zoom class. I ensure that they cannot wait to be on the screen with Mrs. Tamara. Am I grateful that I'm teaching? I'm teaching English. It's what I speak. Yeah, it's, I just have to make sure that I do some study and so my grammar is on point and the way that I pronounce my words are on point and I just need to then give that to them. So sometimes, okay, I'm not sure, you know, screening and writing on the board and doing anything like that. I just involve in, I just get involved in discussions. Yes, I get them to speak. I correct their um, pronunciation. 
I correct their grammar and we just have a great talk. Sometimes I just spend a whole class to see how they're doing. What did you guys do last week? Oh, I went with my grandfather. My grandfather has about 60 or 70 cows. What? 60 or 70 cows? You know, and I help him to do that. Oh, that's so great. And I be involved in their lives and let them feel loved and welcomed and want to come back. Because for some of them, it is so different, difficult to be back on on because not everybody learned the same way there are some students who since this learning online their grades have gone down so much yeah so for those ones i also do my best i text to them how's it going did you understand this work oh mrs tamar this was so difficult what can i do it's okay i'm here for you what can i do to help you oh well i failed because i just really did not understand so this is what we're going to do you know and, and i help them and i let them feel comfortable and happy and want to come back on screen to meet with me monday to friday for classes so that's what i do and then there's my friend kenny kenny's husband is a pastor and she saw him having Sabbath school with the adults and they'll come and they were doing fine and things were great and she's like well, what about the children who's there for the children so Kenny started a children's Sabbath school online and Kenny has kids from all over the world. Yes, I think so far in every continent. Yes, there's been somebody almost off. Well, she's waiting on an Australian. If you know an Australian, please let them contact Auntie Kay or me and I'll get to her for you because she started a children's Sabbath school and now she's doing excellently and there are children who are looking forward to meet an Auntie Kay on a Sabbath morning for their children's Sabbath school program. I know my daughter looks forward to Auntie Kay. Yes. And then there's my sister. My sister, she's a counselor and she knows that there are lots of people who are really struggling. Her clients that she speaks to, she knows that they're struggling in this period. So there must be others who are struggling. So she's been live on Facebook and on YouTube every day just so she can help people with coping mechanisms yeah and because she she knows just like many of us that there are people who are stuck at home sometimes with their abuses can you imagine that when I read that the numbers of the abuse have gone through the roof since this pandemic all I could do was pray yes so this lead to something else that you could do Maybe you're not a counselor. Maybe you're not the camera person like Auntie Kay. Yes, maybe you're not a teacher like me who is there with your students online. But what you can do, yes, if you were a greeter and you can't greet anymore, I'll ask that you walk down the street and that stand across the street so you can't be, you can't be accused of not social distancing. Walk down the street and call to the person next door that little old lady or that little old man or that family you know are not doing very well and just let them stay over their side of the yard or even stay in the buildings you know through the window and talk with them ask how they're managing in this weather oh is the heat too much for you or is the rain a bit too much how did you cope what can i do to help you are you too cold can i go chop some wood for you see what you can do or if there's an old lady who's got everything she needs except a person just sit down and talk with them talk about the dog if that's what she wants yes and connect with people in this time that is so difficult for many many people if you know that you're musical put the camera in front of you and sing we're in a world where technology has taken over everything and everything's been done online sing for somebody if you can play the piano the flute the violin put that camera in front of you and sing and play and have a good time and bring people to Jesus put people's minds at ease there's so much conspiracy theory programs on all sorts going out there oh Jesus is coming in three years Jesus is coming in 20 30 40 50 whenever it is and it's causing a lot of people to panic yes put their minds at ease that it'll be okay and there's a beautiful heaven waiting for you to come but then I remember one of my students 
um, I don't know, a couple of months ago. I asked them to translate for me and it was looking at the Pope and this and all that kind of stuff. And he says, Mrs. Tamara, I hate this kind of talk. I hate what's going on and about the world's going to end and all that kind of stuff. And I asked why and he said, it makes me sad. And I was like, in what way? He said, it makes me sad because it feels like what's the point going to high school when I won't even get to university anyway because Jesus will come and it also makes me sad because I'll never get married and get to experience some of the wonderful things that's out there that hit my heart so much yes because my student is sad because the world will end one day and right now he's made to feel like it's gonna end right now and even if it is, what comfort can I give to his heart? Yes, I know students who, I know people actually, who decide to do wrong things because they feel like they're going to miss out on it and they don't want to. You know, we preach, oh, fornication is wrong, da 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 da, you know, wait. And then there's this one person who said to me, I don't know, a couple of years ago, I'm going to do it now because Jesus is coming. This is before pandemic and I won't get to experience it. Can you believe that people's minds there? But it's because they need consolation. They need us to let them know what beauty is there to come and that eye hath not seen or ear hath not heard. It can't even enter into our hearts what God has in store for us. And then there's this lady who caught Corona and she gave up. I'm gonna die, this is it. Oh Lord, take me, oh, da, da, da. people are gonna put some, to, God's gonna put some people to sleep so they won't need to get the end times and all that kind of stuff. Thank God she recovered, but there are lots of people who are really, really panicking, really panicking. So those of us who know better, let us use technology and let's give them better. Even the older now knows how to use Zoom. My mother said to me the other day, oh, I was so bored. And even though I don't really know much about the phone, I clicked the app that said YouTube and I saw one of your videos on it and I loved it so much. My mother, 17, I don't even know, <laughs> is just clicking on YouTube. Let it be where when she clicks or anybody else like her clicks, they find something that's encouraging in spite of all of the craziness that's out there and the more encouragement the more things that will come up okay so let's find ways of ministering during this pandemic let's go get medication for those who can't go out let's call on people let's just pick up the phone book if there's phone books anymore and dial and call people and cheer up some hearts sing praises and be okay and god bless us as we go through this really really tough time Yes, if you can't preach anymore because you don't have a hundred people in church, record your own sermons, put them on your Facebook and pray and let the Lord take care of it. Okay, so God bless you. And I'm Tamar V. Lawrence. I'll be with you again with another episode of Marriage, Ministry, Motherhood. Yes, like, comment and subscribe until I see you again next week. Bye.